Welcome to Equilibrium Paranormal. News, views and reviews on everything para from around the world. Find us on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube and Instagram. Equilibrium Paranormal. Stay spooky. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are Equilibrium Collective and we are Kerry, Anne and Sarah. We shall be speaking everything about Civil Leap this evening. Um, so if you haven't heard about how you've come to the perfect place. Make sure you get, you get comfy and please feel free to join in with the conversation. The chat is there. We have um, happy to chat away with you guys. So yeah, just leave comments and let us know what you think about um, what we should talk about in the show. Uh, so those that follow us will know that we have some really exciting news this week, didn't we? We do. So um, we did not know this was happening until it actually happened. Um, I got an email from a friend or message from a friend who said that we had been featured on Newt's Top 5, which was absolutely mind-blowing. We had no idea that it was going to happen, and um, we've been really thankful for it. So there's been lots of people that have come our way because of it and checked out some of the content that we give and has gave us some really amazing feedback. So we want to just give a special thanks to Newt Top 5 and those that have come over and those that watch us every week. So thank you so much. So, yes, I'm going to introduce my co-host, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hi, how are we doing? How's everyone's week been? Good fun. It's been amazing. <laughs> it's been very eventful. Been Lots of out. Yes, very, very eventful. It's been, been, been great fun. So, And anything paranormal is always good to talk about. So it's even better that we get to talk about something we're interested in with people that like it as well. So, And that particular video is, is really intriguing. What do you think? Which, which one? <laughs> oh, so many to say. Oh, God. So um, the, no, the uh, new top five video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. The comments, the comments, oh my God. Yeah, they were very, I loved it. I'm we all had a bit of a play, didn't we? Oh, definitely. Our very own Terry Brown, who does our voiceovers and is part of the team, uh, got a little bit of a ribbon for nicking Nuke's line. But did he nick our line? Uh, no, no, I'm joking. Mm. <laughs> to be fair, it's been going years. <laughs> it has been going years. <laughs> so. But Terry did definitely break the internet with that. So yeah, good so fun. Good fun. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it was. It was good. And it's been so great to have some people come forward and give us some great feedback as well. So thank you so much. So tonight we're going to be talking about civil leak. Sarah. Yes, yeah, so civil leak. She is a or was an English witch. Um, astrologer, trance medium as well, which is all absolutely amazing. Oh, and she had she wrote so many books, she was an amazing author. Um, so we're gonna have a look into her Hi. and her work and her beliefs. And yes. yeah, so first of all, what is witchcraft? So, well, me and you had a conversation about this. So considering we consider ourselves as, you know, a little bit witchy, um, we were like, is it that? Was it this? So even ourselves. Um, and Sybil Leak was very definitive on what she believed to be witchcraft and how people perceived it. And it was her life mission to, well, in fact, she, she said some point we'll get to this story further down but she believed that she had a vision and in this vision she was told it was her place on this earth to go and tell the world about witchcraft and dispel the superstitions and the preconceptions of what witchcraft actually was and this is what she did she did what exactly what it said on tin did good old Sybil. i'm trying not to be so expressive with my face because last time i did that i got a really bad screenshot <laughs> so keeping the face neutral <laughs> that's not neutral that was angry <laughs> while I know um so yeah so but we have got a great video of um civil 
beautiful what witchcraft is that we're going to share with you guys but tell us what you think witchcraft is and let's i've actually got the oxford dictionary definition okay well and if some it's people oxford, think like this so the oxford dictionary has its definition as the practice of magic especially black magic and the use of spells mm. really okay so actually um, it is a practice involving magic and affinity with nature within a pagan tradition i like that definition better tomato tomato no, i'm joking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's lots. Well, Sid truly believes that the um, witchcraft, witchcraft is a religion, um, and she believes it is the oldest religion, and she believes it's the only true religion. So this is what she believes. Again, we have a disclaimer at the, at the beginning of our videos, and we say that not all the views that are shared on the show represent us as a as a platform. But obviously, we're going to be talking about Sid Wilson. So this is what she said. But she gave a great definition of what she believed witchcraft to be, doesn't she? She did, and I'm going to share that with you all now. Remember to share. Let us know in the chat, guys, what you are thinking about the definition and what you believe magic and witchcraft to be. So we are at 2.28. Let's go. I am the witch in particular Jack, don't him, Arthur Jackson. You say you Ooh, remix. I was known all over Europe as the leader of witchcraft. All through the time when witchcraft, the witchcraft laws were not repealed. You know, they were not what repealed. Were witchcraft laws? Oh, yes, until 1951. I helped to get them repealed because there are many archaic laws which are, should not be there. But nobody really worried too much about me. I was on very friendly terms with the community and the outside uh, community. But um, the word witch in America has very different connotations than in Europe. And I say nobody bothered about this, except people who were a little worried about anything, like my landlord. You know, if a colored person had walked through our village street, he would have sworn that we were being invaded by Africans. His mind was so prejudiced and twisted. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I had held a show, here. I see a parallel. So the mind which will... Um, you know, seek uh, revenge on a witch, will also seek it in anything that it does not understand. And this is why I lecture extensively on witchcraft and psychic phenomena, because I think once we get to an understanding, then we release fears. You said witchcraft and psychic phenomena. So you connect a witchcraft today, then you would... You would, uh, would... So, what do you think? Yes, so again, I we do have you know, argue definitions of witchcraft is, but we also have our own opinions on what we believe it to be. The thing I like about which, well, the practice is that it's so, so versatile that people can actually take what they want from it. But in terms of what she believed, uh, Sybil believed, is that, that this was a misunderstood um, and poorly advertised through medieval times this is what she stated and that this is where the bad reputation came from but we're going to talk a little bit about Sybil's life and the things that she did so Sybil was actually born in Stoke and Trent in, in England she belongs to quite a well-to-do family um, and because of this she was able to encounter lots of lots of amazing people who would come and frequent the home that she lived her father was a um, academic so he would do lots of papers and research and these people would come along and have a have a discussion with him um, but as far as her family history history she was able to trace her family history history on her mother's side to a lineage, line, I can't my words, what is going on? <laughs> lineage. A lineage, of, lineage of witches, <laughs> right back to um, 11, um, what well, the 1600s is actually how far she went back. Um, she actually was able to trace a, a, a heritage right back to a really famous, uh, infamous witch called uh, Molly Lee, which will go over her story soon enough. And we, re although the story has really sad connotations and it's it, it's kind of um typical of how through history witches have been treated 
how um, Sybil, which is why we love her so much, how she responded to this, how she challenged this was what's made this story so spectacular, especially during her time and in the, in the area that she lived in. She was homeschooled growing up um, and that meant that she spent a lot of time, this is during a time where we had quite nuclear families with quite patriotic times where the women of the family, particularly the older women of the family, would look after the children while everyone else went to work. So this was quite typical of her upbringing. She was raised by her nan, who, and this is who taught her a knowledge of astrology and herbs and um, psychic arts, divinations. This is where her talent come from. She learned from such a uh, young age. In fact, this was considered her homeschooling. This is what she was taught at school. So this is fantastic. Um, her dad, obviously, um, he was quite knowledgeable. So he would give her, he would teach her about the woods and the animals and the more uh, ways to be able to use her herbs. And again, this was talking, you know, an academic as well. So he would do a lot of research and stuff. So from the beginning, she already had a great foundation for her witchery and the, and the life that she led, which was absolutely phenomenal. Um, now, there's lots of kind of grey areas now tracing her um, upbringing up past this point. There is uh, a time where she actually spent time with Alistair Crow Crow Crowley, 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 Alistair Crowley, 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 intervene at any point, guys. <laughs> anyway, the infamous Alistair, I don't want to be disrespectful by calling that, but yes, she spent some time with him. He would come and visit the family and he was frequent quite often um, and they would spend time together. Now, in some reports, it says that Alistair took um, Sybil under her wing around about nine years old. But in other reports, it just said that he had frequent the house and they would go and strolls together and he would share with her his poetry and things that he would wrote and he would encourage her to write her own. So this was kind of a great real, that's the kind of homeschooling I would have been down for, guys. I'm not going to lie. This, that's kind of the party I want to be at. Um, but 18 years old, she was actually sent away to France. Now, she does say that she, when she talks about her childhood, she thinks about it quite fondly. She has some great memories and she was, known that she was very fortunate to be able to be brought up in that environment especially at a time where let's be honest like you know we had the witchcraft act right up until the 50s which forbidden anyone to do that and obviously we had all sorts going and on she for those helped to get that removed as well yes she did and she was actually pioneer legend she was, yes she was pioneering that and she was the one but it and what she was trying to do this is what the vision was telling her was it was her position in life to Disbunk, debunk the negative in like um, associations with witchcraft, and she was able to do that through lectures, writing, interviews. To become very famous for the, her media presence, um, and the and the activist role that she played in in challenging this this um, barbaric law that, let's be frank, was, was absolutely ridiculous, and it got removed thanks to her. So you know. She is a she is all woman. She is a Classic woman. Her, we don't yeah. struggle now. <laughs> but I don't know. I might I might be alright now. Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different show. So yeah, so eighteen years old, she moved to France. So it said that her nan sent her away to France. Um, the place that she went to was called Gorge de Loup. Um, that's not the actual pronunciation because I haven't got a beautiful French accent. Um, but she was sent there. Now, there's lots of reasons why. Now, she does say when she talks about her family upbringing that she spent a lot of time in France and England in New Forest, and she would go between the two. But this particular time, she was sent there at the age of 18, and this is where she was become a temporary high priestess for a distant rel relative that passed away. So she had taken this place. And that's a really young age to become a high priestess. That that was amazing. Um, Billy, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So from then, she spent a time in France, and it is here where she kind of um, continued working on astrology. She actually became in later life a professional uh, um, uh, astrologist. Yeah, I said that right. Yes. She became a professional astrologist, but it was during this time that she was able to um, perfect this and work on it. Um, 
But after she spent some time as a high priestess in France, she did return back to New Forest. Now, I've watched a few interviews of her, and every time she says, I'll always be a New Forest witch. No matter where I go or where I travel or wherever I make my home, I will always be a New Forest witch. And this is what she says all the way through. Um, so she come back to New Forest. This was where she called home. And this is where she become in contact with um, Romanis. Um, and they kind of, they identified with the witch in her and took her in. And she stayed with the Romans um, in the forest for, for a very long time. And they taught her about the ancient folklore, um, practical uses of herbs. Um, I want to say, actually, I'd say for a very long time, I stand corrected by my own notes. It was for a year. She was there for, for a year. Um, and she attended rituals with the Horsa Coven. Horsa? 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 I don't want to say it too many times, just in case. Um, but how does Pat the Asian Horsa Coven? She became the high priestess for that coven, and that coven is said to have existed for 700 years prior. So it's the longest standing coven in the UK or the, the world. Priestess, that's what I said, right? Um, yeah, longest standing coven um, it, within the UK, and she became their high priestess. Um, so, yeah, so that is her magical journey. So is there anything that I've missed there through her through her? No, I think I think you got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, she did have such an eventful life, though, honestly, and she had yeah. so many achievements. Um, well, the part, the only part, the party really got started was when the, she opened the uh, antique shops. This is where the big story awesome. begins. Yes, mm -hmm. she made a point of not selling. Um, any magical or witch pro uh, items in her shop. She didn't want that association. Um, not that she wasn't proud or wasn't um, upfront with her beliefs, but at the same time, she knew she had to, um, she knew she had to, have I frozen? Okay. She knew she had to um, look after her sons and take care of them. And she actually come up against a bit of a challenge in one of these, with these shops. So I think we've got a clip referring to this so during these these she had a free shop she owned shops in burley which is where she lived somerset and also in ringwood now it was during this time when she lived in burley is when she had this vision which basically said to her that she was to go forth and she was to write speak and she should and tell the world about what witchcraft really is um, and this is where her journey, I believe, my, my professional opinion, um, I believe this is where her story really began, um, was when she had this vision and this incident with the shop as well. Are you ready? Yeah, ready when you are. I'm ready. the Rastra witch sometime in early colonial America, 17th uh, century. Witches had a rough time back in those days. So many elderly ladies were persecuted as possessing the black magic and being responsible for all the guilt of the community, it would seem. I wonder how witches fare these days. That's the celebrated witch alive today. Certainly, in the English-speaking world, is Sybil Lee, our, our guest this morning in The Jackdaw and the Witches, the most recent book, A True Fable. Sybil Leek, back in those days, witches were persecuted. Today, they write books. Uh, they are also persecuted, I'm oh. sorry to say. Well, you know, you've got more ways of killing a goose than by wringing its neck. And uh, nowadays, the witches certainly are a much better wicked, shall we put it, than she was a couple of hundred years ago. But there are still the persecutions of the ignorant. You know, man who does not understand will turn on it, his neighbor. Well, let's, let's talk a little about this, the matter of the, the witch then is the stranger, isn't she? Yes. I say she because we're talking about male yes. witches. Mm -hmm. The witch is the stranger because it is really very much easier to be in the herd than grazing alone on the other side of the fence. And this is what the witch has always had to do throughout the ages. But in a way, if I may give you an example of how a witch may be persecuted today, 
Um, I have recently come to live in America. I intend to make this my home. I've emigrated. But in Britain, I was quite well known. I may almost say famous in several spheres, including radio and television, as a writer. I also had a very, very flourishing antique business, which uh, when the lease ran out, my landlord said, Sybil, renounce witchcraft and the lease will be renewed. And I had a terrible temptation because here I was I with two boys to bring up, elderly mother and elderly aunt. And suddenly I'm faced with this in the 20th century. And so I came well, to America. We have this phrase, don't we? Witch hunt. Yes. When we hear this is connected with political dissenters, mm -hmm. certainly throughout history and imagine religious dissenters. Oh, yes. Witch hunt. Of course. So the word does have connotations, doesn't it? Yes. Well, what is, suppose we ask, what, before we ask you about the So we listened to um, Sybil's experience there with her landlord um, and him asking her to renounce witchcraft, which was her belief. Imagine in any other situation, you know, any other kind of belief system. But she had to make a choice between her belief and what she believed and what she, her life or providing for her children. And it was at this point is where she decided that she wasn't going to renounce witchcraft, that she was going to actually go forth and spread the word of witchcraft and break these stereotypes. That are, uh, and she says these stereotypes have come from um, misspent media coverage during the Middle Ages um, with this idea of witch um, and, you know, the evils that they are. I um, mean, she, I will say, if you are someone who likes reading, you should definitely purchase a few of her books, or if not all of them. In particular, she has a book called Diary of the Witch, uh, Diary of the Witch, and she talks about lots of um, her ideologies and theories about why we are who we are and why we do the things we do, and she's very insightful. And there was um, a quote that she put in one of her writings and she says, witches have always been good at getting bad press. As for the devil, I've never met him myself. And I think she just had a really good way of words because if she is saying, uh, her belief is that the devil doesn't exist and that we we don't have a devil or a God, but we have the, the balance of good and bad within us. Now she's not saying that for her, that's her belief. Um, but she, at the same time, she says that she is not there to change anyone's opinion on their belief, just that she should be prosecuted for hers. And that is what they are. Um, that is what she says. She was so she, time, wasn't she? Oh, for sure. For sure. I love Sybil. She's amazing. So at the time that she um, moved from Burley, um, she... Um, had this vision in 1963 where she was in the woods and she was to promote witchcraft. And at the time, she says four, four covens in New Forest with 600 around, around 600 in Britain. And that practiced witchcraft. Um, and that it was the, she says, I practice witchcraft because it is the only true religion. So, yeah, what do you guys think? We have some people in the chat room. Hello, Jason. Thank you so much for joining us. Simon, thank you so much for joining us. We have Laura, Jess, Lynn. Thank you so much, Liz, for joining us. Um, Jess, that's Jess. Yeah, so hi. We had our first ban. I've had my first ban this evening. We won't put up the horrible comments, guys. We won't. Um, so, yeah, we had our first ban. But yeah, so welcome, 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 welcome. That's what you think, what, you, what do you think so far? And yes, she truly did pave the way for witches to come out and not be in fear of practicing. She really did. And that's what her, um, that's what her motivation was. Um, so yeah, Sarah, have you got anything to add? Um, so obviously she became very famous um, but she eventually got really, really, really sick of it. <laughs> um, she just didn't like the attention. She didn't like the persecution, as we've just mentioned. She, uh, 
it she felt like she was literally having or under a witch hunt um and that eventually led her to up sticks and move to america in 1964 where she became the astrologer now i know yeah, you've so done a lot of research on this bit yeah because it's just so badass that's why um so quick we have a quick yes liz so we have a quick uh, message from Liz that we're going to quickly cover because we're just um Yes, yeah, so Liz mentions that I have a couple of Christian witches in my circle. So it's really important to know that witches are versatile bunch. We are Catholic, Christian, Muslim, you name it. There is a witch that is black like every, every there, single <laughs> hat. There's some witches that aren't religious in terms of, you know, a God or a divine, you know, um, or a divine. Really and that would like that. You, you know, you have Norse paganism, which is follows old gods. You've got paganism that follows the old gods. You've got Wiccan that fo follows a new modern type of witchcraft. And then you've got, you know, hedge witch, kitchen witch, green witch, eclectic herb witch, eclectic witch, Earth, yeah. blood, blood witch. There's so moon witch, water witch, sea witch. <laughs> There is literally everything. So that's the one thing that I will say about witchcraft is that you can actually get witches in every. And um, I did not, someone mentioned this to me the other day that in Russia, I'm going to say it's Russia, but I could be wrong, that uh, um, I went through the, you know, oh, I'm back in the room. Back in the room, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that I was told that it was, I think it was in Russia. That this is something I was told. This is something I researched. But that while there was a witch hunt that went on, it was the only country that celebrated both Christianity and uh, paganism together, hand in hand. They didn't separate the two. Um, so, yeah, whilst there was widespread hatred up and down, God knows where, there was, you know, Russia, I think it was Russia, but they celebrate the two. I'm going to double check and I'm going to share the link on the page. Also, if you are watching from Mute Top 5 or you have subscribed recently, we do have a like page on Facebook. It's called Equilibrium Paranormal UK. It hasn't got the same title title as our YouTube because Facebook will not let us change it. Um, but that is our like page. So make sure you go over there and have a look because if there's any articles that we refer to, we often share it on there or videos so people can go back and look themselves. Um, so yeah, so if you haven't already, go and have a like um, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already as well um and yeah um liz um says that correct they are incorporated in both paths they incorporate both paths why are you not showing okay it's quite interesting and yes okay thank you yeah so yeah it's it's you know which is we don't you don't care just be nice just be nice people so we talk about um, Cyril Leap being an astrologer. Now, the reason why I found this was so fascinating was because during World War II, Sybil Leap actually joined the uh, Red Cross. She'd done volunteering with the Red Cross. From my understanding, she'd become a um, nurse during this time, or she um, gave care. Um, but the British government definitely put her to use. So what she decided to do was that, and this is this is a claim, this hasn't been neither confirmed or denied, um, but it says that um, Sybil League was recruited by the British government and it is written by Michael Slazar, Slazar? My pronunciation is poor, um, but he stated, Michael stated that um, Sybil would write phony horoscopes for the German Nazis um, to be, that believed in astrology. Um, and she was able to convince Rudolf, uh, Rudolf um, Hess to fly to England where he was then captured. So it was based off of this um, phony horoscope that she wrote and that was published in, in um, Germany that they were able to... Um, yeah, capture um, Rudolf Hess, I think his name was. So it's, this was quite interesting. It was quite into all the well, astrology and prophecies yes. and things, wasn't yes. it? 
And what else she did was she was able to um, put de that generalization. She was able to figure out where, who were more likely to be leaders, who were more likely to be murderers, who were more likely to commit, commit crimes, who were more likely to give up, all by looking at where their sons were when they were born. And they found, she found, which I was found, was really, really cool. Um, she found that people that had a... Um, son in leo was more likely to commit atrocities <laughs> fun fact mm. um but he michael again he wrote to uh wrote about um sybil and she he said war world war ii was a battle between good and evil and sybil was in the middle so i found that she was quite she used the forces for good and sometimes depending on how you look at it so we're having a little debate here, <laughs> Liz and Jason. Um, they don't follow God, as Kelly mentioned. Kerry mentioned. I think I got my name wrong. But they practice has different rules. They practice like any other pagan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Oh, sorry. Let's bring this out. Um, so, yeah, so this is what we um, learned about um, Sybil. But there's more to her. So the, there was um, a story that she wrote called um, um, The Witch and the Jack. She writes about her son and the story and, and the relationship that he has with the jackdaw. Now, she calls it a true fable. Now, as we know, fables are things that are uh, not real. They're not They're not true stories. But she says oh, it's I a true fable. Plug. Oh, hashtag, yeah, just <laughs> cheeky plug. Um, but she said that the story was so magical that people didn't believe that it was true. But the fact that she could pull to the forefront the evidence of um, her son and the um, jackdaw that she was actually going, well, no, they are true because look, they're here. So there was a good relationship between her and her jackdaw. She had, her one was called Mr. Hotfoot Jackson. Um, and she, um, I mean, she, there's some great footage of her and her jackdaw together, which we'll show towards the end of the show and, and our closing piece. Um, and it's really good to see their great relationship. But she wrote about this, this the relationship between her son and his jackdaw, and it's available to um, obviously purchase this really interesting book. But what we found quite fascinating and what we referred to earlier about her ancestor was there was a really a great story, which has all the sad endings of, of of a witch's towel um but what she done afterwards was, was was amazing so the story starts with Sybil being able to trace her heritage back to a witch in the 1600s um called Molly Lee now Molly Lee was accused of witchcraft the witchcraft that she is allegedly um been accused of is that her jackdaw was seen to sit on top of a sign of a, of a, of a tavern that was fr frequented by um, the local uh, priest. And it's been said that she sent the jackdaw to the tavern to turn the beer, to, to bitter the beer um, so that it was undrinkable. So she was accused of this witchcraft. What actually happened was she sadly passed away before she was to stand, stand trial. They buried her body on the edge, which they do, you know, with, with witches up and down the yeah. up and down the country through the centuries. Yeah, um, they buried um, her 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 coffin towards the back of the church, but facing the wrong way as well. So she was saying even in death, they treated her as an outcast. They didn't keep her included, as they did all witches at this time, she says. Um, so what happened was a few days after that Molly had passed away, the um, local vicar decided, or priest, decided to go to Molly's house to collect her jackdaw. And when they arrive, they see in front of them, sitting on the sofa, was an apparition of Molly with a jackdaw on her shoulder. They obviously got scared and they run away. Um, and oh, what did they do? <laughs> Any logical, rational response to this? Answers on a postcard? They dug her body. They took her out of the coffin. They drove a stake through her a heart. And then, sorry, Kerry. Yeah. 
what's going on here <laughs> with the, uh, the comment are you getting a the comment keep like flashing up oh it's stopped now yeah okay yeah okay. she was um <laughs> no just ruined the story for everyone involved sorry just don't worry about My it bad. um don't even know where was that i'm joking <laughs> they drove a stake through her heart they buried her again but what they did was they put her live jackdaw in with her and then they buried the um coffin now obviously as a traumatic passing for her jackdaw and a horrendous kind of disrespect to her body um so when molly was at when sybil was able to trace her heritage to molly what she actually did was she went and visited now i read this was in ireland this happened however i have since read that it was in stoke and trent so i'm not quite sure the location i've got a thing it's probably stoke and trent but she went and visited this town with her jackdaw and she walked through the town with her jackdaw on her shoulders and she went to visit molly's grave with her jackdaw with her sitting on her shoulder um and if and it was her way of just saying that that kind of treatment was not okay and even though we were hundreds of years past it she was still set, treated with the same disregard as it may be as not as extreme but still nevertheless as molly had done hundreds of years of previous and at this point i have to say the witchcraft act was still in place when when she did this so she completely gave them a big fingers up to them um but we have got a video haven't we about um her jackdaw yes we do bear with bear with sarah the story ruiner ruining my stories since the beginning of time established today forgive me <laughs> Ruining stories since the 29th of the 4th, 2021, at 2016. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ready? The leak is our guest, the celebrated witch yes. from his book is called The Jackdaw and the Witch. And the Jackdaw, this is an actual story. You have a Jackdaw. Oh, yes, How indeed. You a Jackdaw. Jackdaw is like a little raven. Right? Yes, it belongs to the raven family. Now, the raven. With his pose, Raven. Yes, nevermore. And your Jackdaw says evermore, right? And well, my Jackdaw says quite a lot of things. Mm -hmm. He says help. He said nevermore. And he'll say Sybil. And then he'll say help again. What is it about the Jackdaw and the Raven that makes them uh, so special? Very These amazing. birds have a very special history. They've always been used in divination. Uh, many people associate the cat with witchcraft. But in Europe, the cat was not introduced until the 14th century, when witches had been known for thousands of years before. Um, if you go back into Mexican history, South American history, I'm referring to witchcraft history now, and European history, Egyptian, uh, Byzantine, the bird, and particularly the raven family, have always been highly esteemed in the temples and the raven in, in the world of magic divining qualities yes they have there's a special something about these birds and mr hotfoot jackson that's your the jackdaw, uh, the character in the jackdaw and the witch has this well more than anything else that i've ever seen um or known he is a very particular bird he's a magical bird indeed and i think in the book he comes through as this wonderful magical character people are always saying to me he can't be real but he is real and he exists for people to see. Prentice Hall, the publishers of this book, how did, how did you, a uh, uh, jackdaw and the witch, which you call a true fable? Yes. Now, that seems to be uh, yes, it's deliberate. a paradox. <laughs> yes, it's deliberate. Yes, it's fable. Oh. It is, because the style of the book is written, almost seems like a fable. There we go. Done. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, can I just take a moment to really appreciate the appreciation that's going on for my eyeshadow? Thank you, guys. <laughs> Don't ever do that again. <laughs> yeah, I Creepy see you. Me. I see you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's so bad. She can't even blink. So, yeah, so that was her story with her, with her jackdaw. And uh, we did actually try and get in touch with Judy and her son because he's actually done um, – He's actually built a um, a museum as such over in uh, Melbourne, United States. 
Did you know there was a Melbourne in the United States? I did not know that. No, no, I thought it was Australia. But it is in Australia, but apparently, if my research is, is correct, there's a, and anyway, so, so they've built a museum over there and he's like basically put all her work in one place over, over there. So, and it's a, a, like an institute. Um, and I would love to. I mean, we haven't shared enough videos of, of Civil, I don't feel like tonight. Um, because I feel like um, she is such an insightful woman and the way she speaks is so articulate, which is, I'm not saying this as a surprise or anything, but she is, I could sit and listen to her speak all day, all, all day, all day long. Yeah. So we have, um, I think we have another video, which we haven't shown actually, and it was it, her work that she did, um, for the um, astrology, I think that's the other video that we have for her. I don't know if you've got it ready. If not, no worries. Um, no. But there was, <laughs> it's okay. So no she spoke worry. a little bit how, I know, she spoke a little bit about um, the work that she did with astrology and how she become a professional in astrology, how she used that, again, like I said, to um, almost develop a profile on how to predict behavior which is what psychologists have been doing for years and she just found a new way of being able to do it in using something that probably isn't considered scientific measures but gives an idea like i said leo leos and sons you nutters <laughs> but she was able to find a theme in her research of by gathering uh, groups of 500 to be able to identify personality traits that make them more prone to a type of behavior. Yes, it's very deterministic. Yes, it's very simplistic. And you can't do, can't give generalized statements as such because there is plenty of evidence to show that there was other determining factors, socio socioeconomical, economical, psychological. You can't just say that the star science told me so, but the research is very interesting and should have hold a little bit more weight than what it is. Um, so that's some of the work that she did. Um, like I said, she was a massive advocate as well for rights for witches. We have rights to. So yeah, and the one thing we haven't covered, which we haven't got much notes on, I will say, um, is the psychic and trance medium she did with the, the likes of Hans Holzer. Now we've done a whole show on Hans Holzer. Then we did a further show with the um, Dave Schreider, who is from Holzer Files. So if you watch Holzer Files and you're a fan, have a look at our interview with him. He's such a, a lovely, 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 lovely man. Oh, he is. Lovely man. Yeah, he we is so lovely. We had a discussion that we wanted to adopt him as our paradad. <laughs> yeah. <I> imagine <laughs> it's going to happen. Just, <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. But, um, yeah, so if you're into, if you're interested into the work that Hans Holzer did and the work he did with um, Sybil Leek, we touched upon briefly with her, then we would suggest having a look at those lives and having a listen. Tell us what you think about her. We found her very very interesting and very um, knowledgeable. And in your right, well before her time wasn't she definitely definitely there's no doubt about that I mean going through what she went through in life as well I mean she didn't have it easy I mean she she lost her husband two years after marrying him she had all this persecution she essentially lost her home because of her beliefs I mean you can't get worse than that really can you no, and I know that when you said before that she the attention got too much, it wasn't so much that the attention got too much for her. What was actually happening is her landlord and the people that she was working with that were able to look after her children by giving her promises to work and stuff. Then she was an antiques dealer. Um, so her means to be able to support her children. And what was happening was she had to... Um, find ways of being able to go and meet with her coffins and to do her rituals in a way that people that weren't from the media wasn't following her. And some could say, you know, if people today, celebrities suffer with it all the time. They don't have privacy when they put themselves in the oh, yeah, forefront of the media. So it's a cost that she had to pay, but she did it because she felt like it was her calling, like it was, you know. And she, talking about Christian, I'm going off and... Right, so let me finish that point first. So. 
she actually lost her home and she didn't get a tenancy removed because the landlord was saying that the 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 media circus that was being created because of her presence meant that she wasn't welcome there anymore and that's why she ended up leaving but she talks about christianity and she when she was talking about beliefs i know we've spoken about christianity quite a lot and she says i don't believe that we um I'm not quoting directly um, that she was talking about the belief in, in the devil and stuff like that. And she says, I, I believe that there was a man called Jesus. I do believe that. I believe that he was a healer and a carer of that time and that he did do the things that they say he did. But she also says that, you know, people should in Jesus believes that, the, you know, there should be persecution because of it. And I just find her very, her, the, although I might not wholly agree with some of the statements she's made, which there aren't very, there's very, very few that I do, um, but I do think that what she says is very thought provoking without being um, too insulting. She always acknowledges that there is another side to the story, not just her side, but she just asks for the same respect. So, yeah, that's kind of Sybil Leak. We have a lot. We have another little video that we're going to show towards the end. But we do, what, what do you guys think? What do you think about what we've spoken about? And is there anything we haven't covered, Sarah? Um, she moved to Los Angeles and she met a guy called Israel Rigardi. Oh yeah, and he was an yeah. authority figure on the Kabbalah and ritual magic. So tell me about the Kabbalah. I haven't looked into it that much. It was just on my notes. <laughs> but, yeah, that's another thing we can look into. Or if you guys want to go away and research into it, let us know. That would be great too. Um, trying to – she had loads of um, uh, interviews uh, with the BBC yeah. and different stations in America as well. And she yeah. was on radio, and that, that's how Hans Holzer actually discovered her. Yeah, mm. and she, she does a lot of work in New Forest as well. So even when I was having a quick look, I have a places that I want to go to list, and it's getting bigger and bigger as, as this year goes on. And um, when I was doing a look at New Forest, they actually have a whole um, program for anyone that wants to go on the basis of um, experience in leak experience so places to visit um her shops uh, and things like that so new forest is somewhere i would love to go i would i would really like to go to her shop it's still at the, the shop that she had as a um antique shop is a still a shop but it's actually now a witch's shop and it is still got her sign i think there was a besom above the door and i think that's still there um so there's still really strong links to her and little nods to her so i definitely would like to go along and see that shop know that when we get back out yeah i was gonna say when we finally get out go investigating, live. yes go, go live. yes so yeah but hopefully as things start to lift we're going to be going out a lot more we're going out to investigate so um jace in the chat jason goes on at jace He's actually developed a cool piece of equipment for um, team member Laura, Laura Jane, who does the show with Terry, um, which we cannot wait to showcase. We cannot wait to showcase. It is super special and it is completely bespoke as well. He's made it completely off of her um, I, her vision. So we can't wait to give that a go. And he's so clever. Jason's so clever. So before we leave, shall we play the last video? And this is just a general kind of insight to Sybil again and her 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 insight to, to witchcraft and her philosophy. Bear with. <laughs> Bear with me, caller. Bear with. <laughs> just chat amongst yourselves. Chat amongst yourselves. I'm never gonna get used to all this techie stuff, seriously. Okay. I know Terry does it so good. Terry's so good. An excuse for a party, an excuse to get dressed up and have a good time. The traditional time when spirits walk. But if you believe in witchcraft, then Halloween is one of the most important times of the year. I'm in the heart of the new forest, a forest that is absolutely steeped in witchcraft. In the forest, there are covens of witches in the forest, each of them with 13 witches, and they all take Halloween 
very seriously indeed. This is the room of one of them, Mrs. Sybil Leek. She's a housewife and mother. She's 41. She's an antique dealer and a self-confessed white twitch. Now that means that she uses her powers for good and not for evil. She says that she could do all the frightening things like sticking pins in effigies and bringing curses down on people's heads, but she doesn't. And yet, basically, the meetings or services or sabbats, as they're called, are exactly the same, whether they're for black or white. And tonight, the witches and the warlocks will be meeting at such a sabbat. What will they be doing and why? Taking part in it just one of the four great sabbats uh, which witches have always done for thousands of years. We shall be doing it because Halloween is quite important to us as a religious ceremony. It's the time of the year when the fire of the sun is dwindling and of course it, uh, we don't want this to happen. And it is also the time when we ourselves will be feeling a great need to renew the energy of our occult powers within ourselves to carry us through for the rest of the year. It is the sun goddess that you worship, is it? Uh, no, no, it is the mother goddess, the goddess of nature that we worship. But of course, fire is quite important in nature. Uh, what sort of trappings will you use? A few of them near to my cape. There are others, of course, but I don't have them all here to show you. Um, being of a fairly high occult order, we in the New Forest don't use so many trappings and rituals as perhaps other covens do, but there are basic things which we all need. That is the sword and various other things. Are there very many witches about? Well, I think you would be very, very surprised if you knew how many initiated witches there are in the whole world. And not only that, there's a very great following in witchcraft. Mr. Hotfoot Jackson. Sorry, I had to mute Sarah's mic because we were getting so much feedback. Sorry. Oh, she's freaking the room. Um, so, yeah, so um, obviously we, we have some witches in the chat room. We love Har Halloween. Halloween is a great time of year. Um, but she, it, it isn't, she isn't just talking about, um, even in that conversation, you can see that she's trying to dispel some of the um, pre conceptions that he had um about what halloween was and what witches are he she never was shy and coming forward in correcting people in fact she spent a lot of the times in her interviews correcting people where their mistakes and where they've made assumptions and it's quite interesting to to watch she wasn't her do that worried about it either. she was she was no. always quite respectful and sort of she understood the ignorance behind it yeah, she was she was an educator. She was an educator well before her time. And I, I'm sad that I've never been able to actually see her speak in person. But I look forward in doing more research with, with, regarding Sybil Leak, looking at the stuff that she did with astrology, visiting some of the places she used to frequent and hopefully speak with her son. That would be amazing. I have tried contacting him, so hopefully fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um we will definitely be covering Sybil Leak in the future. So yeah thank you guys thank you so much for watching um like if you have missed all the hubbub in the beginning of the week we are on you top five did we tell you did you miss it we haven't shouted it loud enough we were on a new top five guys <laughs> hashtag did you see it <laughs> yeah terry brown hashtag did you see it and um i actually got a phone call from my little brother who had no idea that i do this youtube stuff and um he was so excited to actually see me on this massive channel um that he literally couldn't contain himself he went and told all his friends and yeah so he's told everyone that i'm a um i'm a youtube <laughs> youtuber i'm like oh, maybe i am yeah i guess i am yeah so it is so yeah so um but and, what yes, the Liz. subject of witches and spirituality i just want to get a cheeky plug in there um, I run Fables, uh, down here, you'll see my website and where you can find me. However, keep the website 
because there's a new one coming. It's in construction. I've torn it all apart. I've redone it. We have new products. Come and check it out. Cheeky one. Smooth. Oh, no, that was seamless. Didn't even, didn't even see that happening. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Chef's kiss. Mwah. <laughs> don't forget to like us on facebook follow us and subscribe on youtube we are on instagram eq.co um we are also on tiktok that is jess that's in the um chat she does our tiktok for us as well so we'll be on there um in, in terms of content there's some fantastic series on tiktok at the moment haunted dolls and crypto Ology? Are we doing cryptology? Cryptoids? Yeah. Yeah, um, so we've got, yes, yeah, so that's the episode on TikTok. And we also have, um, well, what in the next couple of weeks, watch this space because Jace, the, the ghost hunt is going to be coming down and we're going to be doing a little um, ghost hunt. And we're going to be using some of the equipment that he's made for us. And um, yeah, loads of new stuff. So make sure you follow us, find us. We're, we're, all of this down here at the bottom um next week it will be laura jane and terry they will be doing a live at thursday at 8 p.m um i'm not quite sure what they're doing but i know it's going to be following the same train of cryptology and zoology i think it's foot. i think they're actually doing bigfoot which i mean there is some amazing stuff going on with bigfoot at the moment there's a new oh, i can't tell too much but there is some exciting things going on um so i'm hoping that we're going to be able to find someone that we can interview for a big bigfoot um episode which would be fantastic so if you've got any recommendations of people that are interested in bigfoot um please make sure you share inbox if you um have any recommendations for interviews we'd love to hear them and um yeah just keep watching stay spooky Oh look, monster. oh, look, my monster. Yeah. So, catch you soon, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Good night. Bye. Bye.